But how we have like some kind of I love you. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, Y2K, Y2K. But the next, the next Y2K is the Unix yes. on Corona. 2038. 38, 38 yeah. yeah. That's the next one. Okay. No. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. I just want to think so long. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we do have the channel from Public. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be like, yeah, so join the Slack channel. Uh, you know, just so that you can maybe start DM your child. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can start? <laughs> you can start something! <laughs> oh, you can start something! <laughs> yeah, we are really deep in real talk, I don't know why. No, it's like, it's like it's annoying because every group has its own Slack like, and it's not easy to be on multiple. Maybe we should consolidate into engineers by what do you think? I, I don't install that. Uh, uh, I don't trust anyone. Okay. Just so you guys know, there's an engineer's buy Slack channel as well. Which, yeah. which does the recording. Which is a little bit more active. Which does the recording and stuff. Anyway, uh, I'm Jimmy. So, those who don't know me, I'm Jimmy. I usually host this event. Although, I hope someday to retire. <laughs> So if you are interested in MC or host events, let me know, like we meet up. Uh, Retirement age is 75. <laughs> <laughs> so please remember to introduce yourself. This is a meetup, very casual, very social. Uh, and uh, we're supposed to have an impact, but uh, it's in my bag. <laughs> so just use your voice and tell your neighbors who you are. And if you want to ask, uh, you know your neighbor's name, please ask. And at the end of this, we have a session called the Rookie Tips. So if you have any tips and tricks, you know, Cards. tips and things like that, uh, there's a session after that uh, which you can uh, take the floor uh, um, for a few minutes and share your Rookie Tips. You can use any tips actually, not just Rookie Tips. But... Um, so yeah, uh, before we start, we just I just want to give a big shout out for RubyConf uh, Malaysia that's happening at the end of the month. Wow, I can't say next month anymore. <laughs> uh, so, and Tevan has a promo code. Yes. So, are you saying it before the meeting? Do you want to say it now? Yes. Or you want to say it after so that people can You want to say it before. <laughs> <laughs> after the okay. end. Okay, after. I think, I think you should say it now since everyone's attentive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it, got you. Huh? <laughs> No, Shia, yeah, you have to wait until the end. So it's the uh, 25th and the 26th of October. It's in the one auditorium, KLCC. And uh, yeah, get your tickets today uh, once you get the promo code. Okay? Now, without further ado, wait. Uh, do we have any hiring shout outs? Yes, sir. Hiring shout outs? I bet some of you are hiring, right? Companies hiring. My buddy, my buddy hiring. Yeah, come. Let's. Hey, hey, hey. What? You want to say something about oh. hiring? My buddy. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm Eric. My buddy, the best company in KL. We've got the best office, the best team, the best presenters. Come work for us. Okay. <laughs> what are you hiring? Oh, you have to go into details. Okay. okay, just arrived. Okay, so we're hiring like throughout the spectrum. So we want PMs, we want devs, uh, we want QA, we want uh, uh, scrum masters. Well, not scrum masters. We want agile coaches, people who can do it properly. Um, we're, we're building mostly in Rails, but we're also building in Elixir. So this is pretty exciting. The the Erlang backed uh, language. Um, yeah, that, that's where we're moving now. All of our backend systems. Front ends all in view, mostly. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so we've got to. Not everything, but that's that. We've got to plug the terms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're hiring for that. 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 Okay, so we're hiring <laughs> so yeah, anyone who's interested in the job, please uh, look for Aaron after this. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah! Oh. No, but we're, oh. we, we, we have the best physical office and we're remote first. <laughs> oh. Sorry, we cover all the bases. <laughs> so far away. What is this? Thanks, Sam, man. What? What? Uh, you want to oh. Oh.
of the Kenya will be related in time. All right, um, I wanted to talk about this, which is uh, <coughs> told all the way down. It's a small saying that says, uh, like an infinite regression, like something causes another, causes another, causes another. And most of the stuff that we do, uh, especially web sockets, you can think of as turtles all the way down. If you can see here, like I won't, I won't even talk about Ethernet frames or like the low level networking hardware. I put the question mark there. But usually it starts off like the more high level stuff starts off with an actual Unix socket, then it goes to a TCP IP, which is a protocol on top of a connected socket, which is HTTP is a protocol on top of the TCP IP protocol. And a WebSocket is a protocol on top of the HTTP, actually a switch of a protocol. And you have your application protocol, which is on top of that, which you can then start encapsulating and doing things on top of your own application protocol. And it's important to get this trace from the beginning to the end in order to understand what WebSockets really are. So the beginning is the socket, and what do we mean by a socket? Uh, this is a pseudo code for a socket. If, uh, if you've done C before and you've worked with raw sockets, you'll see it, it might be familiar. You get a socket, which is of the TCP type. You connect to it, you send to it, and at the end, if you don't need the socket anymore, you close it. So it's uh, a socket is a full duplex connection. So, if, for example, you've done, you've seen a credit card uh, device that. If you pay with credit card, the waiter will come, and then you enter in your key. You'll, you'll, if you notice that small uh, LCD panel that says connecting and uh, receiving, sending, all of these things, and then it prints out your receipt. So it's actually opening a socket, doing some proprietary protocol with your bank, doing the connection there, communicating, and then it closes the socket. And then so it's, sockets are very interesting because it's seen everywhere now. So this is where we start building on top of it. A uh, web socket is takes similar it takes the concept of a socket and makes it it's not really a socket because again it's a protocol on top of HTTP but you can think of it like that as well. So when you do a switch, and which I'll explain later, uh, you start having a full duplex connection with the server. Unlike, for example, HTTP, which is a stateless protocol, basically you. And TCP IP as well. So you send, the, you open the connection, you send your data, you receive an acknowledgement, and you close it. And then after that, there's no more, uh, there's no more connection or no more connection between the, the two servers. And it's stateless because basically the, the server treats each new connection as a new connection. If you were there for the previous talk about uh, tracking pixels, I talk more about these uh, in more detail. So, this is a screenshot which is barely readable, but it's fine. You can always right click, inspect element, or bring up the developer console in your browser, look at the network tab, and then look at the headers. You'll spend, or you can just take a look at how the protocol upgrade mechanism starts. So, you, the, the important thing here is called here it's the uh, upgrade WebSocket instruction, and then later you will find. I don't, uh, sorry, I, I haven't given that. The status code 101, which is switching from the HTTP protocol to the WebSocket protocol. Okay, so there's actually a particular uh, process of upgrading a normal HTTP connection to a WebSocket connection. There's the handshake, there's the 101 status code that the server set, uh, the client sends, sorry, server sends that the upgrade has already happened. And the common uses for this would be upgrading from 1.1 to HTTP 2, for example, so that you can immediately, like if the servers, if the client asks for HTTP 2, then the server will reply, okay, yes, you can switch to HTTP 2, I understand it, you can start using that as well, and that's communicated over HTTP. Uh, yes, this is the usual as well. You upgrade from an HTTP 1.1 connection to a WebSocket, or you can also upgrade from a normal HTTPS SSL to a TLS connection. Okay, so let's do a quick demo of this. I'm, I'll be using 
this website called websocket.org. We have a, a few things. Let's just close these things. Uh, the echo yes. test is, is good to like quickly just take a look at how an actual websocket progresses, right? So I'll go to the network tab again, and it will connect to uh, an echo server. Basically, you connect to it, and you'll see here that there is a connection. And you'll click, you'll see here the frames. Because again, this is this is a full duplex connection that never closes. It's an open connection all throughout. So if you've done HTTP polling back in the day, similar to that concept, but the actual protocol is established. This is not a hack of the HTTP protocol, basically. So you're connected, and you can send a message. It will be on the frame. These are received frames, and it's an echo server, so you basically just receive the same thing that you sent. Okay, so it's a very simple thing. You'll see that the headers that I took a screenshot of are here. So this is the whole communication. But after this, the communication happens in frames. So that's basically what one socket does. All right. Now, what is uh, Action Cable? Action Cable is uh, it was introduced in Rails 5.1 or 5.0? 5.0, yeah. Uh, 5.0, it was an attempt for Rails to become relevant again in the JavaScript heavy uh, environment. Because everyone was doing Socket.io, Node.js, everyone's implementing callback, whatever, and you're still on the synchronous Ruby server code, which admittedly is very, very easy to understand because everything happens in sequence, but it does not give you the same real-time capabilities. So this is a Rails answer to how easy it is, for example, for Node.js to just do a socket, web socket connection, which is action table. But what exactly is it? Is it just web socket for Rails? Because if it was like it was like that, then it doesn't really give you that Rails kind of feel. So if this is actually a set of solutions. There are three parts of this. There's the server-side solution, which is a channel in uh, the Rails server. There's a client-side component, which is a JavaScript that automates the whole uh, communication with the server and the client. Also sends, make sure that the co a communication and that con uh, connection is alive. There's also the protocol, which we will dive into a bit shortly. So there's, again, like I said, there's a protocol on top of the WebSocket pro protocol that I showed you just now. Uh, this, I'll just quickly introduce you to these before uh, we go to the actual demo of the whole action table thing. Uh, when you subscribe to a channel, this is basically what you send through the WebSocket. So you first you establish a WebSocket connection to the server, then you send this. You subscribe to the command is subscribe, and then identifier is a JSON stringify. So it's a, this is JSON, but the content is not JSON. It's a stringified JSON. Have you, has anyone done JavaScript in like, quite extensively here? What? Yeah. <laughs> you actually understand <laughs> this is JavaScript. You're realizing that JavaScript is not a string. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, perfect. No, just, in, just in case, because it's a JavaScript object, basically, that has two keys. The identifier key has a stringified JSON string. Cool, all right, perfect. This is another JSON object. So basically, this is the response of the server. It's also a JSON, uh, it's a text, J JSON, but it's a J JavaScript object converted at the end, where you have an ident identifier, which is Stringified and the type is confirmed subscription. So it, it, this is this has something to do with if, for example, you have authentication and whether you can subscribe or not when you watch on this. Then for every message that you want to send, you have this the command is message, the identifier you send it as well, and the data again is stringified uh, stringified JSON string. That's very good. And of course, you will have like your keep alive. Server will send you this uh, JavaScript object every now and then. I think every I forgot, like five seconds, I think. So uh, you'll see it later as well in the demo, just to keep the connection alive and make sure that uh, the server will clean up when 
basically the, the client is not responding to them. Or like close the connection and the TCP, uh, the TCP network request cannot reach or do not, does not accept or does not receive an acknowledgement uh, packet. All right, so we have a demo. So what is this? Oh, okay, so yeah, we'll just do this now. <laughs> now I do Ah, no, okay, sorry. So I have a Rails server here running. So the default cable uh, endpoint, actually cable endpoint would be slash cable. We open the connection and it will give you basically when you are uh, when you're connected, it will give you type welcome. If you uh, if you've used the baked-in action cable solution from a tutorial, you probably have not seen this. So we're deep diving, we're deconstructing action cable, and then we're building it up bit by bit. That's why that's the uh, title of the talk. All right. So while I'm doing this, I'll just quickly tell a story. I'm using Windows. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's, it's in interesting. Uh, I had to make lots of things work, but it's okay. So I just have a cheat sheet here. I will paste this as a message. I send it. And so that, that was sent, and then the server confirms for me that the message was received properly. And then I can send another command, and it said it confirms as well. Again, in action cable, this one, you'll see that chat was the action. You see here that I said I want to send a message, and then the identifier would be echo channel, which we negotiated from before. And in the data field, I said the action is check, which then action cable in the Rails portion will read that and automatically start the chat method in the echo channel object. So that is the wiring that happens, the magic that happens in there. All good? Yes, so that's that's generally how action cable works. Again, the yeah. Did you make the one this one? Yeah. It's uh. It has have you done action cable before? Uh. Okay. No, I, I, I just wanted to ask because no. <laughs> okay. Because this is like just classic action cable for any tutorial. There's no new thing basically on this one. Later, I will show something new on this one. So basically, it's just logging stop the data that received, that was received, and then I just broadcast it back. Exactly just like the echo server that uh, we were looking at. All right, cool. Now, uh, let us run something else. This is a WebSocket test for from the same uh, WebSocket here. So you see uh, from the same server as the old Echo server that we started off. I'll quickly show it to you. Now, how does not this one? So how does the whole thing actually work from the client side? Right? So this is very low level. It's an HTML document. It opens a WebSocket, closes on a message and an error. These are just callbacks for JavaScript. So I open, I write it, you know, connect it, and then uh, on, on every response by the server, it uh, writes it there. You'll see here that we're using this library. No, we're using the HTML5 WebSocket uh, library that automatically generates the correct status codes for us and all of those protocol stuff that we discussed from before and it just connects it. So this is just how you would write it if you were doing it manually. 
And if you wanted to talk to an action cable server, then you just generate the protocol by yourself, which I will show you next. So what are the parallels of PubSub? Seems like it behaves similarly. Yeah, so PubSub, so action cable is actually uh, their answer for this particular uh, problem for PubSub, right? Uh, PubSub is basically you publish, uh, so you subscribe to a particular channel and then the channel publishes to you. I don't know why they don't really call it sub pub. I guess it's because it's harder to pronounce, so they call it PubSub. It's the, the actual uh, flow there is you subscribe first before it actually gets published. So if you publish it and no one's around to hear it, then you don't know if the published message exists. So yeah, uh, there are more details on your on the Rails action cable. Where is it? On the action cable overview, which actually talks about how PubSub, how how you can use action cable for PubSub. Here. All right, perfect. Thank you for the question. So this is how you would do it by yourself in JavaScript, but I will show you some, so again, we're building on top of things. This is this has been done before, someone has written a library for it, so I'm just going to write uh, to, to use a particular library. So this is a view app that I made to abstract out the that, that uses a plugin to abstract out the whole WebSocket connections and the uh, reactivity stuff that we just saw. <gasps> no, it's just fine. It's the SLIN being very straight. Okay, let's go to This, we felt, was a lot easier for web developers to start growing into because this is looks just like HTML, but actually is compiled into JavaScript, just like JSX. This is just your whole script thing. And styles are just like HTML styles, but again, compiled into uh, JavaScript. So what happens is that the, the life cycle of this is what happens is when the component is mounted, I set the callback on message, and if there's a data, then I push it to a stateful variable in that particular component. Otherwise, I just log the message, which would usually be the just the timestamps. And if I receive a, a data, so this is a reactive uh, variable, I would just loop through it, and then if the data changes, the DOM gets dipped, then the message shows up. So again, we're building on top of things. Uh, you'll see that I don't use the WebSocket, uh, <clears throat> unlike here in info.js, also HTML, where it's very, very low level. I'm starting to move up, move a bit higher level than that. And of course, the final, uh, the final form 
what we can say of this evolution is that you actually start using the way Rails, the Rails team had intended you to use Action Cable, which is to use their own built-in uh, functions, built-in JavaScript files. It's automatically connected. You don't have to care about hooking up to a particular uh, WebSocket or to make sure you have to parse the payload. It's all done for you by the library. Good. All right, so uh, that is generally how, how things are. I can probably talk to you a bit more of a, a full application. In case you didn't know, the application that we're doing, that you're using to communicate with the question and answer is an action cable uh, Rails application. And it's, it's okay, it's hosted in Heroku. The actual front end is hosted on Netlify, which is a static page. It's okay for performance. We, later on, we'll probably start to scale it. But I'd like to quickly talk about uh, why we had to deconstruct and then reconstruct the whole thing over again. Uh, I feel that especially for starting to mentor people or for ourselves as well. I'm not, I don't consider myself a WebSocket expert, but I try to learn it. But I try to make sure that we have to build on top of knowledge that we already built from previous knowledge. That's why I started this with turtles all the way down because in order to, we, we can start building really cool stuff from that particular high level, but we start to also need to understand what is supporting that particular high level concept and understand what is supporting that concept and going down until it's comfortable enough or it's too low level enough that you don't care anymore. Because I feel that we need to start understanding the stuff that we use. It's a general theme that of the same uh, concept I've been talking about for the previous meetups, which is in order to start mastering our own craft, we need to understand and have power over our, our own tools. It allows us, allows us a lot of flexibility and freedom to change things. Like for example, other people, uh, I talked about I talked about the three components of Action Cable, which is the server-side component. You know how things are actually on the back end, so when you receive a message, you look at the type and you look at the action, and then based on the action, you start calling that particular class method, or objects method, right? And people have created something called end cable or light cable light, sorry, light cable, which does not depend on Rails. You can use it for a Sinatra application, a Pacquiao app application, or what are the other frameworks? Mm -hmm. Adreno, yeah. So you, it, it does not depend on Rails anymore. This was abstracted out. For the client side component, which I'm actually using on the application, again, I'm not using Rails to render the application. This is a fully static JavaScript application that you can put on S3. In this case, it's Netlify. There's no Rails component there because I'm using an NPM module called ActionCable.js, which then abstracts again all of these out because it understands the protocol. Speaking of protocol, there is a gem called Action Cable Client because it's not necessarily just JavaScript that needs to communicate over websockets. Maybe you'd want server server, although I don't know why you would want that, but maybe a server to server communication using websockets might be interesting, which performs the same thing because it understands the protocol, it knows how to send Action Cable protocol, and also knows how to receive Action Cable protocol. So, when you understand the tools and you can deconstruct them, you can reconstruct them again the any way you want to. And that's generally why I try to show this uh, presentation. Again, I'm Karaspin at uh, MyValley. Thank you for listening. If you want to look at the resources I've used, I will put this up on the Facebook group as well. Because, uh, because Another thing that I forgot about the so I just wanted to show this whole thread where the Rails core group uh, bigger? Uh, yeah, it's just uh, uh, the Rails core group refused to fix a breaking change in action cable until 5.1. And like it left a lot of people, of course, like 
and not, not knowing what to do because their, their application just broke and um, they, they just have to wait for 5.1. And that's generally the reason why you want to understand your tools because if you don't understand them, they will have power over you, get deployed to production, you have no idea how to fix it. But these people, they, uh, they have to live with it. Why, why was it not to be? It's Japan. Japan doesn't want to. Yeah. It doesn't well, for, yeah, close it. <laughs> it does not work as expected. And then he said, well, yeah. I mean, it's a whole drama thing. It's fixed now, of course. And that's uh, really good. So that's, that's uh, that I forgot to talk about this when uh, talking about understanding. So, yeah, thank you. Any questions? Like, do you have any questions on the app? Sorry. Yeah, do you have any questions on the app? It's it's actually the same. I can show you the source code for this. Uh, it's in GitLab. I, I mean, the the yeah. app is actually quite. Yeah. So what is going on here? This is like a. Big, <laughs> big, yeah. That's faster. Zoom, faster. zoom. <laughs> like a huge touch screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The important thing here is this one, which is the questions channel, which I had to fix for this uh, for this meetup because it wasn't. So yeah, upvote will just get the actual upvote. So the question will just do the question and then Mark Mark has answered for the moderator, which I have. That's why Mark has answered. It's just like, it's, it's very simple here. Uh, the other one will be the front end, which is completely a new application. Do you have any more questions for me while I'm pulling this up? Any questions from the floor? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now the issue that you showed us, right? What was the issue? The issue is now you say that uh, yeah. Uh, it says the title says action cable MPM package is broken. No, it says uh, cable not defined, uncut type error cannot set the property that your cable. <coughs> Apparently, it's like a require of something, so people can fix it easily on their own copy, but the real support team just doesn't want to do it. So we need to do our own. Well, yeah, because it's all open source anyway. And when you get a copy of your node modules, you can just fix it. So most likely, people will just fork Action Cable, fix it on their branch, and oh, sorry, on their uh, repository, and then use that as the NPM module. Because currently, I'm having one real supply bag. Uh, it is quite point old for me. And then it's always like spam. Spam? It's, it's super heavy. Heavy. Yes, so Action Cable, you'll probably see this um, WebSocket shootout or something. Yeah, so there's a WebSocket shootout, and there is this. If you were there last year, the guy from Any Cable was here, right? right? And he was talking about it. So this is a good representation <coughs> of how Difficult or not difficult, but how the, the kind of performance you will have on a pure Rails yep. implementation versus something that, uh, that, that that's that's more suited towards uh, action people. I don't know. I can't see the graph, but yeah, let take a, I'll, I'll publish this as well on the Facebook post that I will make. But basically, if you scale, so this is good for like real time stuff or maybe. 50 or 100 clients that's connected all at the same time. Otherwise, you'll have to scroll, um, you'll have to scale horizontally. But if you just want to keep your costs down, then you deconstruct the whole action people architecture. Uh, basically, replace the, where is it? Replace the actual WebSocket with the ones that listen to the WebSocket and does the upgrade. Replace that particular portion because that's the slow part. 
and then everything else just remains the same. And then you have like scaling on this one. You just need to maintain like two applications now. So you have more points of failure, but it's easier to, it's cheaper to scale. Thanks. All good? Good. Good. Great Thanks. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, 
Uh, it's familiar with all the idioms of the language and so on and so forth. So yeah, uh, that's probably what you think as well. But uh, if you guys were here or uh, there uh, in the last years from Big Hop, uh, uh, Akira, Akira-san actually said that, uh, and mentioned this, uh, and it's very clear, and also Max mentioned this, and this, he mentioned this 21 years ago in one of the Ruby uh, newsletters. So, obviously, in Japanese. <laughs> so, he says, Matsumoto no Kiryu des, Yubi, Yubi ni tai ni blah blah. So, uh, basically, explains what is a Ruby is, what he thinks is a Ruby hacker. So, uh, roughly translated into something like this A Ruby is somebody who would recommend and promote Ruby to others. Uh, he's also somebody who's maybe answering the FAQ section in the Ruby uh, website. He's also in the Ruby mailing list of community, for example. Uh, he also maybe author Ruby books and also uh, writes letter of encouragement to the author of Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and obviously the author of Ruby himself. Uh, and Matt also categorized another group of people as Ruby hackers. So these are the people that write Ruby extensions, uh, uh, write patches for Ruby, uh, write internal implementations from different for different platforms for Ruby. For example, he mentioned DJ PPP and Win32. Anyone knows what is DJ PPP? So like the worst thing. DJ GPP. DJ you do something programming platform or something. <laughs> you can look it up. I thought it was plus plus, right? No, it's a uh, G. No, plus it's plus. not. It's not. So people who wrote implementations of Ruby on their platform. And also programming. Uh, if you write production, uh, the words he said he used is practical. Writes practical program, but uh, I kind of translated it into production. So because production is technically practical, right? So if you write production programming in Ruby, you know, uh, write scripts that nobody has seen before. Wow. <laughs> and of course himself author of Ruby. So, Let's answer this 21 years ago. And I'm not trying to say that I'm a Rubyist. I tend to tell people that hey, please use Ruby, please. It's a very nice to use language, like, nice to read, nice to write. Uh, and I think I'm maybe hack Ruby hacker ish. I don't know. Maybe you can put this in your resume next time. Yeah. <laughs> that you apply for job. I'm a Rubyist and I'm a Ruby hacker. So why do I bother with all this thing? Why do we need to bother with all this thing? Uh, the thing is, if you look at the Ruby committing, uh, the Ruby commits, uh, the number of commits, uh, you can see that Max is not here. <laughs> like this is a bot. <laughs> you know, this bot merges, merges conflict, uh, merges uh, pull requests and things like that. So in short, Max is not really writing the language, right? So. Um, you can see that he's uh, usually just doing this. Uh, he's actually down there somewhere. Uh, if you go to, uh, actually, let's see. Let me go to you. If you look at the contributors, Matt's contribution to Ruby is uh, here. He's the five, it's top five, but if you look at his commits, wait. If you look at his commits, it's like what? Updated the version, he's updated the version, he's updated the version, he's updated the version. <laughs> so he's, he's basically just like pumping up versions. So that's why, uh, yeah, he's, he's just a uh, uh, the version pumper. <laughs> so, in short, the community itself makes the language. Yeah? So, in, in Japan, if you are, have a chance to go and visit them, uh, uh, or maybe join the community. Uh, the community there is just fascinating. Um, well, if you guys know the language started in Japan, right? And, and it's, so the adoption there is huge. Like everyone just writes with Ruby, helps, you know, uh, builds stuff with Ruby, um, and, and 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 it's such a closely knit community. And they just uh, they just have so much fun uh, uh, working with the language. So the community itself makes the language. So how can we ourselves say that, okay, we as a community, let's uh, do this as well, like help out the community. 
well, we can talk about Rui Huang. So I know a lot of people now likes to uh, dabble in new uh, frameworks, new languages, Elixir, JavaScript, you know, hot stuff and stuff. But don't forget to talk about Ruby. You know, Ruby is still fun, it's still nice. Uh, and write some code in Ruby, share them. Uh, I have some really weird uh, projects in my GitHub account. You can take a look at that, like building your own blockchain, things like that. You can always try it in Ruby, you can write it in Ruby. Um, yeah, incorporate Ruby libraries and frameworks into your company stack. You know, even though sometimes if you say the language or the framework is not really uh, ready, right? Like last time I talked about hyperstack. I did say that uh, please use caution when using this in, uh, in production, but hey, use this in production so that you can get better. Uh, or you can teach your school about Ruby. Uh, you can go to this website, this is called Hello Ruby. Uh, this is uh, from Linda Lucas. If you guys know Linda Lucas, he started, uh, she started uh, Rails Girls. And she's now writing children books. And there's a program, or well, there are certain, uh, a few programs and a few books that uh, she, uh, she created that uh, you can actually teach four, year old, four years old about programming logic. So yeah, teach a four year old. <laughs> how, how old is my account? <laughs> This tree? Okay. So year one. Then you can start to learn Ruby. She speaks Ruby as a native language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, or you can coach and mentor funding Ruby as you can uh, join uh, uh, the hackathon that's coming up, the uh, Law Tech Hackathon. Yes, correct. Yeah, there's a Law Tech Hackathon that you should check out, or maybe you can do a shout out later about it. Yeah, so go and mentor people, you know, uh, uh, and mentor budding rubies. And how about in Ruby events? Right? Come, come to the events. Don't just stay home and watch the stream, you know. <laughs> come to the events. Oh, oh please, I think. Uh, <laughs> and go to conferences, uh, meet new people, build networks. Uh, and you can see that I try very hard to make this an acronym. <laughs> <laughs> Is it back running? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, the Ruby community is great. That's what I'm trying to say. Because we not talk, right? I think this word hasn't been thrown around for a while. Yeah. Maybe maybe people uh, get too familiar with it already. But I think this is something that is very very unique. Uh, at least for me. Uh, before Ruby, uh, I was a PHP developer. I was actually script script developer. There's there's no such thing like a community spirit. Uh, obviously, the time there's not a lot of meetups around. But even so, I don't I don't see like language having a character or a community having this kind of character or or even a, a, a style or, or even a soul. You know, in that way. Uh, and and a lot of it is because how the founder and how the build the core members in Ruby in, in, in mostly in Japan has built up the, the, the whole uh, ecosystem and the whole mindset, and they're just trying to be. They, we just want to be very nice to other people. Uh, Matt is nice, so we are nice. Hopefully, you guys know this. And that's all. Uh, and that's why I think it makes Ruby a very enjoyable language to write and also to learn. And Ruby also, to me. Uh, very unique or, or, or a very uh, important characteristic of Ruby is that we, we don't force you to write things in one way. We don't want you to do things in one way. Although I think uh, people might disagree that you know this is not a good thing to teach beginners and things like that. But I think it takes away from 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 a person that wants to write. Uh, who is writing the language. I want to be able to write in my way. I want to be able to write in the way I want to. And the way that Ruby lets me do this, or lets its writer do this, creates, creates something beautiful like this. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this before, this is a uh, co coding contest. Yeah, coding contest uh, held in 2013 uh, in uh, Ruby Kaigi. 
So it's called Trick, T R I C K. Uh, I think the full name is Transcendental Movie Lingo Something Coding Challenge. You can look it up. And you can see here, this is a form, right? Uh, begin with the DC program, obviously. Uh, you should be able to write a program unless you are for you a program in movie that is too difficult. Uh, at the end of your journey towards the ultimate program, you must be part of the programming language. Uh, you will end if you don't program. Okay. This is totally legible, totally like sentences, and this is actually this is a actual Ruby program, right? So if you it's executable. It's executable now. It's executable program. So to prove this to you, how do I do? Yeah. To prove this to you, you can just copy and paste this. Which you can version? Sorry? Which <laughs> movie version? Uh, I think... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You can see that this is an actual program. It writes, uh, it, it, it compiles everything. So, um, yeah, this is how flexible the movie is. None of that having problems. So, you must be a part of the programming language. Brings us to the inevitable, uh, inevitable conclusion that we need to be part of the programming language as community for the language to grow, for the language to thrive. We are the community. And speaking of that, I think it's been a long time we haven't talked about why we started all this thing. Uh, if you guys were here in 2013, uh, which is where we had the first Ruby KL meetup. Uh, we were here <laughs> from the beginning. But it all started when four of these guys, actually there's more people, but four of these guys kind of went to Red Dot in 2013. Red Dot is a Ruby conference in Singapore. Uh, we were discussing in few years and we uh, were thinking about this talk uh, by Akira. Uh, he was Kind of talking about Ruby community as usual, and he talked about Asakusa Rabi, which is the uh, Ruby community in Tokyo. And they are the biggest uh, Ruby community. They have weekly meetups. Uh, I think, I think weekly meetups or even daily meetups. Uh, every Tuesday, and they are all core committers. So in some sense, it became more like a like a C C programming. Uh, we don't know that <laughs> because you know, Ruby is written in C. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 so amazing that they have such a big core committing community team, and so many people working with Ruby and passionate about Ruby coming together uh, on a regular basis. So I was like, yes, yes, we want to do that. Yes, uh, we want to bring something back here to Malaysia, uh, and uh, yeah, we want to start something. Uh, Back in KL, and that's where we had the first meetup. Uh, oh my God. Sorry, yeah, this was it was at my Valley, uh, and it happened on July second, two thousand thirteen. Why, why do we have an X between KL and RB? Oh, uh, because it's a uh, because X is cool. No. Jimmy's keyboard had a <laughs> problem with X's. No, why is it KL X RB? Because group stop KL RB is taken, I think. Or, like what? Or KL RB is taken like. In either Twitter, uh, Twitter or Facebook or something. So KLX Army is just like, you know. He made it, the it was the hype at the time. He just put X is randomly in the sentences and it just followed. No, I heard that because KL, KL Army was taken by KL Room Clock. Or something. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> something like that. Okay. Like, like, for SQO reason or for like, like we can't get the, the, uh, the username we want, so we put. KLXRB. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is a reboot, so I think it's fine. So it's KLXRB is the it's a cooler KL. <laughs> SpaceX, right? It's cooler. They have the X in the name. Hmm? SpaceX. SpaceX, yeah, we have it in the new So yeah, this is the first meetup. Uh, and this is where we started to coin this Ruby Tuesday. And then uh, three years later, we have our first conference in Quail City Mall. Like maybe you guys, some of you remember. Uh, it's a Monday weekend. Uh, it was really fun. 
Was it recorded? It was, it was not recorded. <laughs> it was very noisy. <laughs> we have uh, two tracks running simultaneously on the same floor uh, with very low ceiling and underground. <laughs> so, mm? And yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. So, but yeah, we had fun. Um, a lot of fun. So, which is why we had another one, which is uh, last year uh, in Cyber Jaya in uh, Magic. And yeah, we have. Uh, more than about 200, wait, 200 plus attendees, um, uh, including speakers and everyone. I think this was the first time Aaron came over, right? This is the first time Aaron came over. This not, is the not first this time Aaron came over. Oh. Not this one. Oops. <laughs> the one, the one, the, the, the more camp, popular the champ, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> so Akira came over, Aaron came over, but unfortunately you can't get mad. But yeah, we'll try, we'll keep trying, <laughs> we'll keep trying. Uh, and yeah, and, and this is the actual, the first time we have like a two days, like a really serious, like full on uh, single track uh, conference. And yeah, it's, just, it's, it's fun, it's fun. So yeah, and it's here, we keep, uh, we up here, so yeah, a uh, lot of uh, uh, great speakers. And that's why we're doing it again. We're oh, missing me, it's actually like, uh, Sura Labs <laughs> yeah. and uh, everyone there. So yes, uh, come and support us. Uh, uh, we are having it at the uh, end of the month. So, we are the Ruby community and we are part of Ruby. So the question is, are you a Rubies? Can you really say that you are Rubies? I hope so. Or are you a Ruby hacker? I hope so. One day, maybe, your name will come up in the Ruby committers list or Rails committers list. Are you in the Ruby community? Do you join our meetups regularly? Or <laughs> meet or play better? Jingle. I feel guilty now. You must just say that you skip because you want to play better. Oh, yeah, that's true. That means it's more important. So if you answer yes or answer no, or hopefully answer yes, uh, then yeah, please stay a while and listen and talk to us, <laughs> talk to the Ruby community and start to build a uh, relationship with us. <laughs> so that uh, you know, you be part of it. Jimmy's gonna cry soon. And uh, so again, I want to welcome you all, especially first timers, to our humble uh, meetup. <laughs> So, and uh, actually that's all I have to say. Yay! <laughs> right, so as you can see, there's no Q&A section. Who was that 4%? Hmm? Who was that 4%? Who? Oh. oh. Where they are now? Uh, that's a good question. Where they are now? Actually, besides Crystal, uh, <laughs> this is, this is Zui, Azumi. CTO of uh, This is uh, Nguyen. Uh, uh, Nguyen. Nguyen. Yeah, right? No, we call him Nguyen. 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 You forgot. It's on the live stream, he's sending you a message. It's like actual full name of it, but we call him Nguyen. No. So yeah, I think more of them are from uh, 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 Yeah, they used to be from Sets 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 Sets
It's so it looks at right? <laughs> this like a cow flicker game. Okay? <laughs> 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 what is this? Like, no. Thank 
John, Sean, and John, Jen, Jen from uh, uh, John from Faith, and Gui from Penang. Uh, yeah, yeah. uh, 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 I mean, Penang. Oh, Ruby Penang is having a meetup next week. Next week, yeah. Anybody is in Penang? Next week, guys, come up. I think they're also live streaming again, right? Ah, uh, yeah. I think so. Just once. At least, uh, Rudy has all the streaming. <laughs> so yes, please come and buy Rudy tickets. Rudy Comp tickets with special promo code. If you can get off. Jeez, look at the look at the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> These kind of conferences cost like thousands of tickets. Okay. How much is Red Dot in Singapore? Red Dot is. Three hundred sing dollar, okay? <laughs> sing dollar, right? Yes. You guys don't know how good you're getting it. <laughs> Alright, so please support. Thanks to the sponsors like my million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Um, once once fans actually please see it. Yes, please mm -hmm. support us. So the schedule is almost yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Yet, so some, of some of them yeah. haven't decided their talks yet. <laughs> But yeah, everything's awesome. Wait, how, how come? But, but they, don't you get like a PR? Sorry. No, RFC or something? What? You submit a. Yeah, yeah. It's not a small packet. Oh, okay. What happened? I don't know, because I was confused. Because you're supposed to submit a talk. And how come it's like. To get it for me? Me? No, no, no. no. <laughs> you. you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's that's about what we talk. Uh, and yeah, so go check out the website, go check out the speakers and the KLCC is I think here. It's opposite of KLCC. Yes, it's okay. Okay, so. Uh, this is no. No, this is not. This is just. What is this? Yeah, what is this? What is this? Time source. There's a time source part. Really? Can we go? Can we go? Well, there's nothing I can Where's the Apple party? Anybody have any opinion on 
this on this map. Right. Mm -hmm. We can just do it. I will all speak at once. <laughs> so it ends with a question mark, right? So what does that mean in Ruby invention? True, false, true. Uh, yeah, so it, 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 it's a it's a sort of convention. It's not a hard requirement in Ruby that it will return a boolean value. So, will this method actually return a boolean value? Yes. Yes. What will it return? It's not an object match. I, I don't remember the exact name of the thing, but it's a match. With the it's a match um, object. Yeah. No, it does return an object, but it's not yeah. a match. Oh, oh, that's a string in Q. Yeah, that's a regular expression match. If I'm right, it's a match. But if you're not zero, if you're not zero, if you're not zero, that's why it's the position of the match. It will return. If, if, if there's a positive match, it will return an object of the type of integer, right? It'll return an integer. Uh, and, and that will be the position uh, where in the string, the character at which the match starts. So in my little example there, Hoots, McFoody, it will return two, 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 two. So, so it's not really something 